Hello, everybody, and welcome to another wonderful day of chemistry. So today we're going to be finishing up our uh, chapter talking about molecular species by talking about oxidation state, which is more or less a fancy way of talking about atomic charge when looking at larger molecules. Because here's the part of the problem. We can figure out the charge for an overall molecule that's fairly easy to assign because electrons are discrete objects. They're either on the molecule or off. But the problem is, is that those electrons can quickly move from one atom to another. So we need a rough way of saying where the electrons are at. And that's more or less where oxidation state comes into play. Is it looks at each individual atom and says, well, approximately how many electrons are on this atom and how many electrons are on that atom. So this is actually fairly uh, simple for when we're looking at atomic ions. So things like sodium or chlorine. So with sodium, it's got a plus charge. So the oxidation state is plus one. It's missing an electron. If I've got chlorine, its oxidation state is minus one, saying that it has an extra negative charge. It has an extra electron. And that's more or less what we're looking at with oxidation state. Now, the problem is, is it can be a lot trickier when looking at molecular species. So let's look at chloroform. It's overall neutral, but not all of these uh, atoms want electrons equally as much. We know that chlorine loves electrons. We know hydrogen and carbon are somewhere in between. So how can we figure out how many electro extra electrons those chlorines have grabbed? So we can do this with oxidation state. And this is more or less determined using a set, uh, set of rules. So we start off with fairly straightforward ideas. So if I've got any elemental form, the oxidation state is going to be zero. So for example, if I've got H2 gas, well, all of these, uh, the overall uh, charge is zero. And each of these uh, atoms want an electron the same amount. So nobody has excess or deficient amount. And this will be true for any of your diatomics, H2O2, but even for triatomics or larger uh, solids like mag magnesium, where because I only have one type of element, everybody wants the electron the same. Now let's go ahead and try and figure out for larger molecules. So the basic idea is that the sum of oxidation numbers has to be equal to the charge of the species. So if I have something like carbonate, this is an overall charge of minus two, which means there's two extra electrons on this entire carbonate ion. Then the question becomes simply, where are they? Are they on the oxygens or the carbons? Turns out oxidation state can help us figure that out. Whereas if I have a simple atomic ion like magnesium two plus, well, that means the whole molecule is short two electrons, which means that there's only one place they can come from, magnesium. And CO2, no charge, all, uh, there's no excess, uh, net excess or uh, lack of electrons. So that means that all, uh, any extra electrons has to come from somebody else. Now, this means that if I know that the net has to be a given number, I need rules to figure out who's likely to have more and who's likely to have less. So a good place to start is hydrogen. Hydrogen almost always loses an electron to pretty much everybody else. So in general, hydrogen will be plus one. Now, the exception here is when it's paired with a more metallic element. So a good place to think about it is that if hydrogen is paired with a non-metal, it's plus one. If hydrogen is paired with a metal, well, this is the one case where hydrogen can take electrons from somebody. These are called hydrides, sodium and calcium hydride. And in this case, hydrogen is now minus one. But pretty much hydrogen will either be plus one, minus one, or only in its elemental state, zero. Then that gives us oxygen. So in general, oxygen is going to be minus two, except when it's paired with something more non-metallic. So for example, so the general rule is that oxygen is pretty much going to be minus two, more or less unless it's paired with a halogen. So fluoride, chloride, bromide. That's pretty much the only thing that'll steal electrons from oxygen. Otherwise, oxygen likes to steal extra electrons from somebody else. Thus, 
the minus two oxidation state. And one of the things that's really helpful is that oxygen and hydrogen are everywhere in chemistry. So this usually helps answer most of uh, the molecules involved. Now, there's another set that's pretty straightforward, and that's going to be the alkali metals, which are, unless they're in the elemental form, are going to pretty much always be plus one. And alkali earth metals, which unless they're in their elemental form, are pretty much always going to be plus two. It's a very rare for this to deviate. Then we have another set of molecules that rarely deviates, and this is the halogens. They almost always have a minus one. They almost always steal an electron from somebody else. The only exception is unless they're bound to multiple atoms. So for example, if I'm looking at something uh, like uh, oxygen fluoride, the fluoride is going to be minus one. Same thing in chloroform. But if I'm looking at, say, a chlorate, this is the case where I have a chlorine bound to multiple oxygens. And in this case, we're starting to look at some deviation. In this case, oxygen will be minus two. And the chlorine, well, that one's going to be a little cur more curious. And we'll talk about these in some examples of class. So this gives you a set of um, uh, atoms that you can usually use as a reference point. From here, what you can then do is uh, start by solving your oxidation states, figure out which species you know, mainly start with your hydrogen, then your oxygen, then your alkalis and your halogens. And then anything else like a metal or carbon or nitrogen, usually you can figure out by knowing these uh, these five species. So let's go ahead and look at some good uh, example cases. So let's start with chloroform and perchlorate. So chloroform's a little bit easier. So let's start there. It has a net neutral charge. So everybody has to sum to zero. Hydrogen has a clear set rule. It's almost always plus one, especially now that it's bound to carbon. Chlorines all bound to one molecule. So they're all minus one. So, I, uh, so that's most of the molecule solved. All I have now is to figure out carbon. Well, here I can use the fact that the total is zero and the total is also gonna be the equal to the sum of all of the other oxidation states. So this is gonna be the sum of carbon plus three times chloride because the chloride shows up three times plus the hydrogen. So we know that the chlorine is, uh, uh, the chlorine is minus one, so it's now going to become minus three. And we know that the hydrogen is, pl is plus one, so it's a plus one. So we have carbon minus three plus one equals zero, or carbon minus two equals zero, which means that carbon has an oxidation state of plus two. And carbon is a quite tricky species to work with because its oxidation, it's one of the few molecules its oxidation states can go from minus four to plus four fairly regularly. All right, now let's look at this famous pesky case of chlorate, perchlorate. So in this case, we're gonna start with oxygen. It's a terminal uh, atom. Chlorine in this case is a mono. It has an oxidation state of minus, minus two. We know that the total has to be minus one. Now we have to go ahead and use this same basic formula. Everybody added up has to be equal minus one. We know that uh, oxygen is four. Uh, oxygen is minus two. So what we have is minus one equals chlorine minus eight. Rearrange this guy and chlorine has to have an oxidation state of seven. So this is really useful in helping us figure out where our electrons are in our system. And we're going to be using this a lot later in the semester. So it's a good tool to have in the back of your pocket to help figure out who has more electrons, who has less. And later, we're going to be helping it map using this rule, these rules to help map out where electrons are moving. And this can be useful as we move on next chapter to looking at an overview of chemical reactions. Until then, take care.